Hey guys, it's Joshy here, and I am here with something slightly different for me. This is actually one of those Pokemon idea videos where we might have ideas or thoughts or hopes or things like that for Pokemon to come, and ways we think it could be improved, and we put them into a video format and discuss, and I think that's one of the great things about it, and the idea in doing this stuff is greatly actually, especially doing this one, is greatly influenced by uh, Fufutu Sam, um, who is actually one of my favourite Poketubers just it's not even the battling thing it's just listening to his ideas and the way he collects sometimes information from the community around him to better um, create a video content so this one doesn't too much have ideas from around it was more of mine because once my brain starts going it starts going but I will also link his video at the end because I think you should check out so much of his stuff and there is actually many things Bulbapedia have fixed up or included because he has done the research and they're in his videos as well so definitely definitely worth a watch but anyway this is the Pokemon entry hazard idea so okay so like we know we already have four entry hazards spikes toxic spikes stealth rocks and sticky web but as many people agree not all entry hazards aren't really that fun and just boring and or a little OP in some situations and in my opinion almost the same as using double screens or a veil which again is a very very viable tactic to do but sometimes I'm just like nah I don't want to use that let me use like Z splash on something stupid or you know I, I if you've seen my videos you know anything viable is usually less likely to be used by me. So what I have done while talking on Discord to Toasty, which is Sergeant Burton Toasty Senpai, and he does artwork for me, for those people that doubt it, that's who I'm talking about. Um, he, you know, we discussed and come up with a cool basic idea, and I just kept elaborating and elaborating, then did even more out of Discord with myself, and I've come up with this idea. So what it would do, I would give every single type one entry hazard, and then on top of that, I would only allow two entry hazards to be laid up on the opponent's side of the field at one time. So, now, please keep in mind that with moves like spikes and other layered entry hazards, uh, they only count as one no matter how many or little layers you do have. That is one, and it's only two when it is two different entry hazards laid up. It should also be noted, guys, that when entering the field, if there are two entry hazards laid up, they will be activated in the order they were laid. So let's just go with some we know. We know we have spikes and sticky webs. You will lose the damage from spikes before having your speed lowered. Now, uh, I also, I believe that entry hazards should be absorbed by a Pokemon of the same type. Just like toxic spikes are absorbed by poison Pokemon, I would love to see even stealth rocks absorbed by rock Pokemon, spikes by ground, even sticky webs by bug. Now, some people I could see going, oh yeah, but how would a rock absorb this or a bug absorb that? Well, I mean, a bug could literally eat the sticky webs and absorb it. That's literally what spiders do. They eat their own webs. Um, rock could easily take it on as part of their body. I mean, most poisons I could see, but then some poison Pokemon seem just like, you know, different types of Pokemon that aren't like a muck that just absorb things up. It, it seems like it's just a general Pokemon. So to me, it would work for all of them. So to start with, I just want to jump into the one, the first four we know. I just want to recap and we'll go from there. Then in alphabetical order, pretty much, and you'll see why I say pretty much towards the end. So anyway, first off, in order of actual appearance in the game, we'll go with Spikes, which is our ground entry hazard, which came in in Gen 2. And for those who don't know, Spikes are, are pretty out of all things, especially when... Um, Stealth Rocks came in, got undermined, but you can lay up up to three layers of spikes. Layer One layer does one-eighth damage to the coming in Pokemon, two layers does one-sixth, and three layers does a quarter. Now, do remember that this is completely ignored by flying Pokemon, Pokemon with the ability Levitate, and Pokemon holding an air balloon. Now, as I said, it is kind of undermined, and Stealth Rocks really takes the edge. So, I feel like if this was just left like this, this would be one of the least used entry hazards, especially in competitive play. So, I would like to make a small change to this entry hazard, and it'd be probably one of the few that would... Especially the damaging ones that would have continuous effects. Now, what I would like to see is that landing Pokemon take damage. And what I mean by this is that Pokemon that have left the ground and return, or Pokemon that are 
turning or landing on the ground for the first time will take the damage set to the same amount. And I feel like this could be, you know, much better. So, for example, let's say with a Pokemon leaving the ground and coming back, we have something like Bounce, you know, or if a Pokemon that isn't a flying type does use fly like Golurk for example or a possible metronome user or anything like that once they do land again they will take the damage now I wouldn't include dig myself because they're not really leaving the ground for people who might think of that it's more going up and coming back on top of this which really really could make it uh, quite interesting would be Pokemon using the move Roost for healing. So if you actually were able to get all three layers up and keep them on the field, a Roost Staller would then have to actually only gain a quarter of the HP back. Now obviously they'd Roost, they'd get the HP up and then lose the HP, but if you are trying to Toxic Stall, it's going to be a lot harder if you're also poisoned to do it, and I feel like it's going to give a bit of an edge to Spikes, that it never had before. Okay, so now we'll go on to number two. So this is Toxic Spikes, which is our poison one, which was introduced in Gen 4, and it's pretty straightforward. One layer of the Toxic Spikes gives you the normal poison, and then when you add two layers, you get bad poison. And just in case there's anyone watching who um, doesn't fully um, understand the poisoning, normal poison does one eighth of your HP every single turn, while uh, bad poison actually gives you one sixteenth the first turn, two sixteenth, three sixteenth, and onwards every turn it increases. Now, if you are switched out of battle, it does reset. That is a little bit of a uh, but it does help break down walls or Pokemon that are trying to stall you out. Eventually, they're going to have to swap or go down. Even if they're healing, they won't be able to heal the same amount. Now. As I'll try not to say overall, but because I said it before, uh, Toxic Spikes is already absorbed by Poison types. After this, in my opinion, every type would be absorbed by their own type. Now, this um, also, just speaking of the Spikes part, I think, as I said, Spikes would cause damage to landing Pokemon or such. I don't think Toxic Spikes would work the same way. I think they're a bit different. They can't have as many layers laid up, and their actual edge is the fact they're poisonous, not that they're just a damaging move. So I, I think that would be better off kept exclusive to Spikes to add that edge. So on to our third one, which is Stealth Rocks, our rock entry hazard, which also came into Gen 4, and in my opinion the most overused entry hazard, which I find some people just lay them up for the sake of laying it up and then screws around with me when I want to use the weakest Pokemon I possibly can because it needs that Focus Sash. But that's another story. So anyway, Stealth Rocks was quite interesting. And in my opinion, when I saw it, when it first came in, I believed it opened opportunities to bring in more because it really worked with its typing, which was Rock. So as I said, it did undermine spikes because it did give damage, but unlike spikes, these rocks would float around your opponent's team, so they would hurt anything, whether they were airborne or not. And then the damage was calculated a bit differently. It was one layer and that was it, but instead, if you were four times resistant or took 0.25 damage, you would only take one thirty tooth, one thirty second, thirty tooth of your HP, if you were just, you know, normal one-time resistant, uh, you would take 1 16th. If you were just normal, you'd take 1 8th. If you were weak or two times, you would take 1 quarter. And if you were four times weak to rock, you would take half your HP. Now, most people do know that, but it's just me seeing it work really strongly with the rock typing. I was like, this is going to open doors to more entry hazards to open, you know. But no, no, it's it's just just that so far and I would love to see this absorbed by rock types I think it would stop it being a little too OP in my opinion and then if you did like I said I like to run uh, focus sash Pokemon especially ones that generally they're things that a little cup in a higher tier I like to do which need that focus sash to be able to do anything so I think that would really rebalance it and finally, on to our fourth one, which is actually the last one that is in the game at the moment, is Sticky Webs, or Sticky Web, which is our bug entry hazard. Now, for those who are wondering, this was actually only introduced in Gen 6. I was a little surprised myself. I thought it was definitely a Gen 5, possibly Gen 4 move that I just didn't pay attention to, but no, it was definitely only Gen 6. So what 
uh, Sticky Web does is it actually lowers the speed of an entering opponent by one stage. Now, again, it is laid on the ground, so it is ignored by Flying, Levitate, and Air Balloon Pokemon, but it still does work on everybody else. We do also need to remember that Pokemon with Competitive, Defiant, and Contrary will have their abilities activated while entering onto the Sticky Webs. Competitive, giving a double boost to special attack with a lowered stat. Uh, Defiant, same but with attack. And Contrary, actually giving it the opposite effect. So this time it'll be boosting the speed by one stat. Overall, I think this isn't actually a bad entry hazard. I just don't think it's balanced being only able to get rid of it with Defog or... Um, Rapid Spin, I just think, you know, it, it's a one of a kind and I think it stands out there by itself and, and needs other guys to join it. And you'll see what I mean as we go on. And now on to the rest in almost alphabetical order. You'll see why not. So anyway, we'll jump into number five, which is our dark type entry hazard, Midnight Lights. So as you'd guess kind of from the name, this would have your Pokemon lay or summon ghastly floating lights around the opponent's side of the field. So what these would do, these would essentially strike fear into your opponent's Pokemon when entering the field. So this would actually lower their attack stat by one stage. Now, do remember again, competitive, defiant, and contrary need to be remembered while using them yourself, but these are also floating lights, so these also do affect flying and airborne Pokemon. They are not exclusively ground laid entry hazards, so you can make this a little bit more versatile by itself compared to sticky webs. Now on to our sixth entry hazard, which is our dragon type. Now, I, I really thought about this more than anything else. I sat back and pretty much there was only a couple more I spent more time on, but I just thought something magnanimous and vibrant and rare as a dragon doesn't deserve something plain as a bit of damage. There needs to be something there. And then I came up with an idea which I thought, you know, we have a couple moves with similar effect, but it's not something we see a lot, and I think this could be really interesting as a mechanic. So what we would, this would be called is Dragon Scales, and what it would do is your Pokemon would scratch, scrape, and shake a layer of scales onto your opponent's side of the field. Now these are quite light scales, so they will be fluttered up into the air with any movement, thus allowing it to affect airborne Pokemon. Now what this does, if your Pokemon is a monotype Pokemon, it will add the Dragon Typing to that Pokemon when entering onto the field. Now, if it is a dual type Pokemon, it will actually overwrite the second typing of that Pokemon. So, for example, something along the lines of Dunsparce, which is a mono normal type, would enter the field and thus become a normal dragon. But something along the lines of Butterfree, so say, which is a bug flying, the flying type will be overwritten, making him a bug dragon. So, this would be really cool because we, although we have moves like Soak, which turns you into a mono water type. We have a forest curse and trick or treat which add an additional typing on possibly making you three different types. This would be activated on entry and not by a move and really could be able to sway a battle in ways where you know if you had it laid up and then had a Draco Media you know person absolutely smashing things out or even some really strong dragon pulses you're going to be hitting something that's probably weak like most of the time only thing definitely walling you is a fairy dragon type entering the field or fairy to be fairy dragon it also will allow entry hazards to be really worked with so let's say you had toxic spikes if a pokemon that was something and poison came out you'll be removing the poison type if this was laid up before toxic spikes because you've got to remember the order they're used in same as let's say sticky webs you use this then sticky webs and something that is something bug comes out you would overwrite the bug and then they would be etc dragon which thus really allows this tactical thinking of layering and which way to go about it. And I just think that would work really cool. And then even as an extra niche, being able to make sure this is laid up on your side, whether it be uh, through a magic bounce or smart plays with things like that, or just hoping it ends up there, you could turn Pokemon that aren't dragon types into dragon types and make it a very niche weird type of a battle. But... 
you could easily run that so that way if you wanted to run something that learns dragon pulse as a dragon with stab dragon pulse it works really really well okay so on to our seventh one which would be electric now i think electric one would really work well as static storm so what this would do this would cause a storm of static electricity to be formed in the air around your opponent's side of the field now as you've probably had half a guess this would actually cause paralysis on entry to your opponent's pokemon and again obviously it's airborne so it doesn't matter where they are um but it also does actually cause one eighth damage to all airborne pokemon so this would be flying levitate pokemon and it would do it to uh air balloon pokemon so i think that would just really create an interesting edge and then i wouldn't cause it to pop the balloon so say i'm happy for it not to but it's definitely going to cause damage now this obviously does still matter about resistances so pokemon with limba and pokemon who are ground types will not be paralyzed on entry and obviously ground types so let's go um claydol or uh gliscor neither of them will be hurt either when entering into static storm i just think this gives a little edge and i think adding other statuses into the entry hazards really does balance it now people could run double status entry hazards people could run this people could run that there's a lot you could run but it's all about laying them up and they still can be removed by same types entering on top of them or defog or rapid spin so it's not like they're there permanently and you still, as I said, have to spend a turn setting them up. Now on to number eight, our fairy entry hazard. So this one actually didn't take me much time. I had a very simplistic idea in my head of what I thought it should be. And I think it should be called friendly pheromones. So your Pokemon would spread pheromones onto your opponent's side of the field, making entering Pokemon become friendlier and lower their special defense by one stage. I think things like these, again, with the sticky webs as used for the speed lowering and other ones that would lower stats would work quite well because people can really niche it to their team. Now, you can definitely have counters and that if you're a big entry hazard player, but I think generally all things entering and entry hazards definitely can have counters to them. But I just think having stuff that lower each stat one stage really could make it so you can use it well and obviously you can't lay up everyone you'd have to pick two stats to lower and i mean most likely if you're going to lay up two of them your opponent's got one of the two and if they don't you are extremely lucky so now on to number nine our fighting entry has a move so this one i really had to think about how would i get this to work and what i wanted it to do so I wanted it again to be a um, stat changing one, but it just had to be right. So what I thought would really work is something like Pummel Ground. So what this would include is a fury of punches, kicks, elbows, headbutts, knees, and etc. onto the opponent's terrain. So what this would do is cause not just ditches, divots, and dents on the ground, it would cause jagged rocks, spiky edges, and higher mounds to be sticking out of the ground. So originally I was wondering, being something that's really affecting the this platform a Pokemon will be standing on, would this really be something that would just affect standing Pokemon alone? I think no. I think especially with the drag, jagged edges, sharp rocks, a flying Pokemon and airborne Pokemon need to still find their center the exact same as a Pokemon standing on its own legs or whatever it's on. So what this would do then, in this moment, they're trying to find their center, they're offset, they're put off, and their defense is lowered by one stage. I think this works really well as well with the whole, you know, absorption of its own type, but instead, obviously, the game would reword it to be like, I don't know, Machoke leveled out the terrain while entering the field. So instead of, you know, taking the drop and everything, he levels it out, so entering Pokemon after that aren't going to have that defense drop. Again, this will be really interesting, like Friendly Pheromones having that defensive stat drop because it's going to make you more susceptible to certain oncoming attacks. But at the same time, certain abilities can really benefit from this. So it would be really interesting. And if honestly, if you entered a match without a fighting or fairy type and someone laid the two of them up and you didn't have Defog or uh, Rapid Spin, 
if this happened, that'd be me 80% of the time. It could be a really, really bad match. But at the same time, you can easily turn things around and use your own entry hazards to your own niches based on your own team. So on to number 10, which is our fire entry hazard. So if you haven't guessed it yet, I, I think you're a little out, but we know what it's going to do. But anyway, this is going to, in my opinion, I think charcoals works really well, but if not, hot coals also works well for the name. And as implied, we lay out a layer of coals. Again, this will be a ground exclusive one. I think coals can't be too high up into the air. They, you know, it's, it's flat, it's down. Even with a bit of heat rising, I think it causes Pokemon that land and stand on these to burn that Pokemon. Now, obviously, there are certain abilities that do prevent this, and I would agree that this would activate Flash Fire on entry, which is really works well if you have a couple of Flash Fire on your team, because, you know, I would say even pre-absorption, I'd still activate the Flash Fire. I think this works really well if your opponent's got a very offensively physical team, or if you just want to work in that way of burning the opponent instead of poisoning them. Again, you need to scan your opponent's team and see what types they got. So if they have a couple poison but no fire, this works really well to be able to lay that up, and they're still going to take you know damage from something per turn, which is you know it's quite small damage, but definitely can work out to be a big benefit, especially if they're a leftovers recovery staller, because well, you lose what you gain when it comes to being burnt and leftovers. So I think this would really be interesting and you could definitely use it to your advantage. Even again, back on your side, as I said, with flash fire or even things like guts. And, you know, you can make things work. Following this, we have number 11, obviously, which is our flying type entry hazard. So originally I was like, what, what should I do? What would work? Um... I, I'm just trying to think of the right thing. And and one idea I had, I did actually use for another one, which I'll get to later. I'll point it out when I get there. But I just, in the end, came up with the idea. Now, obviously, the name Whirlwind is taken. Obviously, you can use things like uh, Whirly Gig. You can't use Hurricane Twister. Uh, you could possibly use Windstorm. I'm happy for that. It The name would just have to be correct. Um, things like Whirly Gig aren't necessarily referenced everywhere in the world, I don't believe. So... You know, there's, I don't think I hear it much here in Australia, but it's just getting the right name that would work. But in my opinion, well, a gig will work. So what this would do is create small gusts of wind that circle around your opponent's side of the field, almost creating an air current that continues to spin the opponent and throw them out on entry onto the field. What this does then is obviously it confuses the opponent on entry, which I think is fantastic. I think being able to lay up something where a Pokemon comes in where there's already a 25% chance they are not going to hit you, but will hit themselves. And that, I mean, it's not a massive percentage, but it's still a percentage you can really work in your favor. I also think that it would be very intriguing because... Again, you have abilities that work with all status conditions, whether it prevents confusion, so that works out well, whether it's like um, Twist of Feet where you get evasiency boost in while confused. So you can still use this, if it's on your side of the field, to your own advantage. And it's not the biggest offset, but I just still think having something that confuses the opponent like this on entry would be really, really interesting. So next, we have a number 12, our ghost type entry hazard. So this one I actually thought worked really well on the opposite side of our dark one, and this one I call this Silent Whispers. So what it would do, it would be kind of summoning ghostly entities which would not be seen by the opponent, but on entry would start murmuring, whispering, maybe making threats to the opponent's Pokemon, thus lowering its special attack stat by one stage. I, I think this works really well on the counter side to the dark. You could definitely lay both of these up to make sure any entering Pokemon have lowered attack stats. I think seeing if people start using these a lot, we'll see contrary Pokemon used a lot more, as well as 
defiant and competitive, which I really think would be cool because you'd see some boosts, especially in um, smoke on tiers of certain Pokemon based on ability, but also having these capped at two makes it really cool that you can pick certain stats to lower. You can actually have more entry hazards to bounce in and out of when others are absorbed or gotten rid of. I just think, as I'll reiterate, is that having a stat lowering for every single one would be just better and I think it just levels a playing field for everyone. Following this we have number 13 which actually is one of my more favorite ideas I came up with as well which is our grass type entry hazard. So this is actually called the sharp roots and is actually the only entry hazard I came up with which has multiple layers. So what I do I have this as a max of two layers. So what it does it causes damages to all Pokemon on the ground so standing or sitting or etc when entering the field similar to the effects of self rocks but is capped at a quarter damage. So same as like if it's really resistant it's 132 uh you know 132nd whatever it is. Um it, if it's half damage, you know, resistant just by, you know, a bit, uh, it's 1 16th. Normal is 1 8th. Two times is a quarter. But if it's four times weak, it's still a quarter. I don't think going any more with the effects here would be a smart idea. Because beyond just causing damage, it also comes with an extra bonus. With one layer, the Pokemon, which is out in your team, so... If it is a double or triple battle, God forbid they bring him back, it's the Pokemon who is in the same spot as the Pokemon that laid up this entry hazard. Um, God, as I said, God forbid triples come back. They gain 50% of the HP drained from the opponent. But when there are two layers laid up, you will get 100% of the damage taken. So this is really cool. Again, as I said, maxing it at a quarter, it does mean that, you know, there isn't two entry hazards you can put together that will take out your opponent in one go, which I think is good from full HP. But having this up works really cool because it allows you to get something a little back. And I think that little bit of a cap is all right so that it doesn't completely threaten things and you're not getting 50% HP plus back on some Pokemon depending on who's coming in. But I just think, it, again, it's another really cool thing. And I definitely think it's one that's worthwhile keeping on the ground. I definitely think with that effect, it doesn't need to be wild around. And it's sharp roots. So, I mean, guys, they're in the ground. So, doi. So number 14 we have here our ice type entry hazard. So I didn't think about this too long. I knew what I wanted and this is called sheet ice. So what happens? Your Pokemon forms a thin layer of very slippery ice on the ground of the opponent's side of the field. So obviously the Pokemon entering who are on the ground, so not airborne Pokemon, will lose balance and slip when landing on it. This causes them to have a lower of one stage in their evasion seat. Now, I think this can work really well if you're relying on less accurate moves and you don't want to have to spend the time boosting your own accuracy. This also will work really well with, um, you know, sleep-inducing moves like Hypnosis or even Grass Whistle will get a bonus out of it. And, you know, although it's not, oh my god, everything's going to hit, it's definitely worthwhile. But, there's more. I think because of the freezing conditions around the ice, I think all Pokemon affected by this have a double chance of being frozen by a secondary effect of a move. So, although I think this sounds a little OP, I do think this should be capped at a max of 50%. And you might be going, 50%? Well, there's only one move. Well, yes, okay, there is only one move technically, which is secret power, which if it's snow or ice around, and if you could get a snowy terrain or that up, it is 30% chance. But other than that, everything else is 10 or with a 6.67% for try attack but there are ways to boost it and I have used it in a double battle myself and I use this with serene grace which yes doubles the chances but that may you go oh it only gets to 40 well you can also use fire and water to um pledge in the same turn in a double or triple battle and what this does is double the chance again so I found by doubling and doubling I could get to 40 percent thus if I was doing this on sheet ice it would give me an extra boost with a blissey or a dunsparce which are the two I use but only to 50 percent not up to 80 because that's getting a bit ridiculous for freezing a Pokemon and in saying all this guys I also have the idea I think I'd like to see a new ability possibly on new Pokemon as well implemented where when hit by an ice type move this ice Pokemon will 
gain another layer of ice on their body, thus increasing one defensive stat by one stage. Or possibly two if we want to say that. But any ideas like that, we might save for another video. Following this, we have number 15, our normal type entry hazard. So I'm definitely really loving the idea I came up. I had this straight off the bat. I thought it's great and I'd love to see something like this implemented, which is called normalizing zone. So what this does, it actually, your Pokemon creates a bizarre atmosphere around your opponent's side of the field, which causes any entering Pokemon to lose all immunities. So what this would mean, let's use Doug Trio as an example. If Doug Trio enters this atmosphere, this zone, what would happen is it would allow him to be then hit by electric type moves. They don't become not very effective. They don't become super effective based on the fact he's just a ground type. It just means he can be hit. Now let's go along in Doug Trio. It would not just remove electric immunity, it would also remove poison immunity, which is great because if you laid, let's say, normalizing zone up pre um, toxic spikes, then a steel Pokemon enters, has normalizing zone activate, loses its immunity, then can become poisoned from toxic spikes. This, I think, would work as well with abilities that have an immune, but things like absorbing abilities like Volt Absorb, Water Absorb, Storm Drain, I think they're not immunities. These are absorption moves. They are different, but things like Limba, and immunity, which stop you getting poisoned or paralyzed, will then allow you to, you know, they're null and void. You, you can be poisoned, you can be paralyzed. So it also, I think, um, removes inner focus. I'd love to see that also affected by it because that is an immunity to flinching. It's not like it's something, it's an immunity, guys. It's, it's what it is. Um, now, this does not stop absorption immunity. So, in other words, if a Pokemon is entering in, let's say a uh, poison type to absorb poison spikes, they aren't going to be poisoned first. This isn't an immunity based on the game's, you know, typing or anything. This is an immunity that happens because you're entering and absorbing it. Also, I would like to just double state, remember when immu losing immunity, something like uh, Ferrothorn, this would really balance Ferrothorn because this actually allows you to hit it with poison type moves, which then would be super effective because they are super effective against grass. There are many other Pokemon along those lines whose secondary type is countered by if an immunity or its first type by its secondary's immunity, but this just kind of counters that and it would make you have to really think what's going on to do it and as i said laying this up before other entry hazards could really really work in your favor and as a final point for this i believe this should actually make attract work on same gendered and genderless pokemon about 20 30 percent of the time now if you're a little worried about stuff or want to say stuff you know it doesn't mean infatuation is necessarily always a sexual desire or anything so it doesn't have to be viewed like that but if it is you know, guys, same gender attraction happens, so deal with it. Following this, we have number 16, which is the water type entry hazard. Now, this was another one which came to me pretty fast, and I really like, which will be called Bubble Wall. So, the using Pokemon creates a wall of bubbles of an almost soapy consistency that pop on contact. Now, I say you've probably thought of what I'm going to say. Yes, any entering Pokemon will touch these bubbles and the residue from the pop will cause, usually you think, in the eyes, a lower of the accuracy by one stage. So this works really well if, yeah, I guarantee you there will be some great, great battles you'll see later where this has caused a sweet, sweet change where some vital move misses. But again, water Pokemon can absorb it. Certain Pokemon can use it to their benefits, and it can just really, really work out in the long run. So I'd just love to see something like this implemented. And as of this one, that actually covers all our stats. Attack, defense, special attack, special defense, speed, and the accuracy and evasiency. So all can be lowered by entry hazards. Okay, so for those who are paying a bit of attention, or possibly 
paid attention earlier to the alphabetical almost statements, uh, you probably noticed that there were two left out. And the reason these were left out is because these two make more sense when explained at the end, and I think they're ones that definitely need something else there, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So let's get into number 17. This is actually the psychic entry hazard. Now, this was the one I thought could work, you know, with flying, getting air current moving, and could have a similar effect, but I definitely thought that adding it with the psychic actually gave it a secondary part to the effect and worked a lot better. So this would be called telepathic control. So what this would do, this would cause the other hazard that is already laid up on the opponent's side of the field to move around with psychic energy. This then causes all Pokemon to be susceptible to the hazard. If the Pokemon absorbs the hazard, they will still be affected before absorbing it, but if they are immune to the effects instead of completely um, ignoring the effect, there is a 10% chance of the effects occurring. So let me explain this. For example, toxic, you know, you, know, you can't poison poison types. You can't paralyze electric types. You can't burn fire types. So they are immunities in terms, so they will be a 10% chance of happening. But things like Ice Pokemon, they're not immune to having their evasion see lowered by one stage. That will happen. Flying type Pokemon aren't immune to being confused. That will happen. And then let's say you send out a Pokemon that has Flash Fire, for example. Yeah, okay. Uh, just off the top of my head, if we had a fire po a non fire Pokemon with Flash Fire, it would have a 10% chance of not activating Flash Fire and getting burnt instead. So it it would really, really be interesting and it adds that whole layer of like, I'm now going to cause these ground-based effects to hit airborne Pokemon, but also on top of that, I'm going to give a chance of this to affect Pokemon it normally wouldn't. Yes, it's only 10% chance, but it still works. And that way... Even though it's most likely not going to happen, if someone is sending a Pokemon in to absorb something, they are either going to take the effect of whatever is laid out if they're not immune, or if they are immune beyond the hazard, there's that 10% risk they're taking. And although it won't happen every time, it's definitely going to make it a still a slight risk and will definitely turn some battles around if that 10% chance works out in someone else's favor. So finally, we are getting to our last one. Now there's a reason I left this to last and I'll get there. So this is number 18, the steel type entry hazard called ironclad lockdown. Now obviously, usually I thought of First off, steel, you know, a bit sharp, bit rugged, maybe a bit of damage. I thought, no, I think we've got enough damage. We don't really need any more. But what could I do with this? Well, Iron Cloud Lockdown's a little different beyond everyone, and it's probably closer to the psychic one than anything else, where it doesn't exactly affect the Pokemon that are entering directly itself. It actually amplifies effects or assists the previous laid hazard. So what it does, Ironclad Lockdown can only be used, obviously, after there's a hazard already laid up on the opponent's side of the field. And this actually prevents the absorption of the underlying hazard by any Pokemon. So I was thinking, you know, we could think of it as a steel coating over the top of it. And that works, in my opinion, as an Ironclad Lockdown. Or we could use it as a, you know, more of a energy, but then I thought energy makes it seem more like Pokemon, like Klefki exclusive type of thing, where I think Ironclad should be something which is more mostly just steel Pokemon. So I think like a, you know, metal coating type of over the top works really well. And so this can be removed obviously by steel type Pokemon, but this has to be removed before the underlying layer can be removed. So if your opponent has no steel types, you can really lock down what is there and that it's not going anywhere or you can at least cause a bit of problem where you might only really want to concentrate on the use of one entry hazard mainly so you can make it harder for them and then you can possibly draw out a steel type so it does really make it hardly well hardly fair I should say for some people but then again as I said having two up it is still fair because this is one of the two 
As a final little part, when rapid spin or defog is used, there is a 30% chance that only ironclad lockdown will be removed and not the layer protected by it. So this I think is really good because if that 30% activates, then although you are still losing that layer, it's going to take two turns or it's going to have to take then the Pokemon to enter in. So I think it can make it really useful and thus once someone's used defog once or rapid spin, if they only remove the 30%, there's a high chance people are probably going to think, I just want to get rid of this, I need it, go and go for it. And that's where you can go, well, you use Defog once, I have a competitive, I have a Defiant, I have a Pokemon that resists, I have something in the back that works well for this. Again, it's overthinking, it's very well team planning and all this stuff. And yes, it does work and you could do it. And then there's times where you just throw a team together that has three Grass types against the Fire type, which... I've been there, I've done that, but it's fun, and I think that's great. So guys, that is all of them, and I think that is great. Now, just before I finish as well, I'd like to state, I would like to see one more move or two more moves you know, added to the game that remove entry hazards. I think if we're going to have so many and a versatile lot that we're going to see more, like, I mean, we see a lot of these in competitive already, I'd love to see some ideas that for moves and use the comment section. Give me a move idea. I'm not going to actually throw any here. I want to hear what you guys have to think, but I want to move that removes entry hazards again. Even if there's maybe one that removes ground ones easily or for sure, I don't know. Come up with your own ideas. I'd love to hear them. As well as this, guys, I'd like to state, I will be editing. This is actually taking me a long time to record with stop starts, the right wording and things and not stuttering or coughing because being six fun and the amount of free time I get but it's just a lot there I will edit but if there is a small mistake you're welcome to point it out in the comment section down below but have a look first I will pin any corrections that are made that are correct so that way 50 people don't have to correct me on the same thing if God well, God forbid if God pray that um, 50 people actually watch this video but there's all that also, guys, don't forget, I am going to link Fufu. If you like this type of stuff with ideas or future thoughts or just type of really niche ways to use things or that, have a check out his channel. He makes some of the best content for ideas, thoughts, and just niches. And I love that type of stuff. I honestly do. And that is why he's one of my favorites. So please do check him out because this is the type of content he makes. And he really, really inspired me to throw this idea right out of here in this video. So guys, that is definitely the end of this video. So as I said, if you do did enjoy this, there is people like Fufu who do stuff like it. But also if you did enjoy it, definitely, definitely throw any entry hazard in game or my thought at that like button. So I know also I'd love to hear in the comments beyond just removal moves. If you have an idea for a different hazard would be cool. Also, I would love to also hear if you guys do like this type of content, the ideas I have because I can tell you this brain goes like when it starts it just goes so when there's some ideas I can make more videos like this they will take time but I do enjoy sharing my ideas with people so let me know that in the comment section as well also discord twitch twitter and that is linked below I love getting people on there especially for battles on discord and you know other games I do as well but that I like to have fun battles and that's my thing fun is the main point to a battle and Final, final point, if you do enjoy this, you want to see more of my content or more of my crap, hit that sub button because it definitely, definitely helps me out. But guys, don't want to, you don't have to. So anyway, guys, until my next video, I'll see ya.